You're watching HKM TV. And hello, Hopkinton, and welcome to the Thursday edition of the Hopkinton Hangout Hour. I'm your host, Mike Terosian, and today is Thursday, September 10th, and being Thursday, that means it's time for the Board of Health update, and joining me today, uh, my co-host, Bob Hamilton. How you doing, Bob? Hi, Mike. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Great, great. And uh, going solo and holding down the fort over there at the health department is uh, our director, Sean McAuliffe. How are we doing, Sean? Pretty good, thank you. Excellent. So, uh, big week coming up. There it is. It's Thursday, and uh, got a few things, just a couple things going on in town, like, I don't know, annual town meeting, start of school. And so, uh, well, let's, let's start off with annual town meeting. Where are we at with that? We're, I think we're in a good spot. You know, we have uh, the tent, um, they, they should be completing the tent installation today. Um, we're we're just taking care of some last minute um, adjustments where, because it should be a, a, a pretty good day. Um, Weather-wise, um, I'm bringing some additional tents um, to help shade the, uh, the volunteers that are working. Um, so it's, it's, we're just working out those little details. And, um, uh, you know, we've, uh, Bill, Deputy Miller and I will be out tomorrow marking out um, all of the chair locations. If you're looking to speak um, during the meeting, we'll have um, we'll be setting up all the queue lines, um, figuring out like I'm going to be sanitizing the mic and our mics. So figuring out where I'm going to you know position my chair. So it's it's really those last minute details. And then we're going to do a a general walkthrough um, with all of the stakeholders to make sure that you know, we've got the signage and we're directing people properly and, and that the corral is um, easy enough to navigate. And, um, and then if there are any last minute adjustments, we're going to try to get those all taken care of Friday. And then Saturday morning, um, we should be, you know, we expect to be all set. So unlike regular time meeting where you're there every night, it's just you sitting there over there with the rest of the uh, administrators and so forth and I mean uh, what are you gonna have on as far as staff and volunteers for the health department so I'm what are the numbers like so really it's just gonna uh, I'm the only one who's gonna be there from the health department oh, uh, oh. you're gonna hold down the whole place huh yeah I mean it's it's it, I, w I was before Casey and uh, <laughs> um, and then you know to that point I mean my you know my two other staff members, they're not residents, and both are, um, you know, one could say that they're both, um, you know, they could be considered highly susceptible. So it's, sure. you know, for them, it's why, why introduce unnecessary risk? And that's, that's one of the things that we've done throughout this um, whole process is, you know, we've looked at, you know, it, if, if everybody is separated by six feet, um, really we, we further reduce the risk. And, um, and, and we've looked at, um, you know, that's why we're holding it out to, outside. It's just, it's, it's safer. We can, you know, it's, it's just a better risk calculation. Um, we've got, um, we'll have a separate seating area for the, the select board members. So um, there'll be enough of a distance between them and the general public that they shouldn't you know, play any risk or pose any risk to the resident participants. Um, and like we're just like with town elections where we're trying to make sure that we've engineered as many controls as possible to make this a a safe and um, rel readily executable event. Um, and then 
as Connor keeps on saying, this could be one of the fastest, uh, you know, town meetings. That yeah, I mean, th this also could lead us into, you know, future looks at changing, you know, the one, two, three nights uh, to one afternoon or one day, one, right. one early thing. And being outside, you, uh, I don't know if the gods are with us, but here we are looking at a high of 70 with a hotly cloudy. I yep. think it's going to be a fantastic day for, yeah. for everybody. Uh -huh. And, you know, it, and I feel that people, I'm hoping, you know, there are, there are some articles that people are passionate about that will tend to sort of stretch things out like they do at a regular town meeting because they're passionate. Uh, however, I feel that, you know, they're going to move business along because you're sitting there with a mask on. You can't move unless you need to uh, hit the facilities or something. But it's just, I think it's going to move great. Yeah, and, and we've got, um, I, I believe that the, you know, town administration has done a really good job at um, making sure that we're only addressing the issues that are critical to the town's operation. And then they're also, um, they've taken care to make sure that, um, you know, this, the democratic process, the citizens' petitions are being heard. And everything else is, you know, or can be addressed in another venue, in a safer venue. So again, I, I, I argue that on all levels, yeah. um, everybody that has been involved in the process has done what it takes to, um, again, make this as streamlined and as safe an event as possible. I tell you, for something that normally doesn't cost a lot of money to run, you know, your annual town meeting, we'll say if they did run the two, three nights, you're talking custodial overtime, basically. Now here, you know, you got the big tent erected, you're gonna have an audio engineer, you got all the extra police, although you have, you know, a couple of police officers, now you're gonna have more. It's, this is gonna be quite a costly event. It's, I mean, I, mean I, I went out and I bought hand sanitizer, Santa you know, like all these little things that you know i've got i've got the wipes for the microphone like so you're right and um and and it's it's one of these things that you know i'd say the majority if not all of the uh uh you know municipalities are undergoing the same um the same costs right so sean i wanted to ask uh, i know you mentioned about uh Everybody is assuming it may be a short meeting, but we're planning on bringing drinks and food if we're going to be there for a long period of time. Uh, isn't that true that they've said if you're going to last, uh, I don't know, eight hours under the tent, you're going to have to bring something to, to drink or eat. That won't be uh, a problem. Can you get in and out to take care of that? And also, what do you think? Uh, what are you preparing for? 18 hours? 24 hours? What? Nothing like that. <laughs> Nothing <you>. like that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to be home in the early afternoon and take my kids out for a hike or something. Um, I, um, again, they, they streamlined even, even some of these more controversial or just some of these, uh, articles that could, um, be a little drawn out. I believe that they've worked the questions and worked with the people that have, or the residents that have brought these questions forward. Um, they should be able to provide a, a fairly, a fairly quick decision. Um, and then there's a, there's a mechanism for the details to be worked out um post um post town meeting how about food and drink that we um like we'll have some like i i i intend to have some bottled water in my car but um 
I, I really don't expect it to be uh, an issue to like really to go beyond or to go long enough where, you know, food is warranted. And then at that point, I mean, we, we don't, we don't allow food at the normal town meeting because, um, because of, you know, you know, various allergy issues. Um, I, I remember my first meeting when someone was eating peanuts. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is a peanut free room. And, uh, and they, they just weren't aware and uh, yeah. uh, quickly exited, you know, disposed of the peanuts outside the, the room. I'm waiting, and, uh, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to, I can't wait to uh, talk to Arbidia to go over the rules, you know, setting the bounds and all that. Yeah. Because I remember for years that we talked about this when Dr. Collin was our moderator that in the opening, they always say, you know, uh, the warrant is posted at the two firehouses. Nobody goes into the firehouse anymore, especially Woodville. That was a garage. Yeah. And nobody goes to the firehouses. Um, no use of electronic devices. Everyone's updating their Twitter with the, when the articles change. And what, I mean, the whole thing's changed. So I'm hoping that this is going to be the start of redoing how he does the layout of his meetings, um, which, is, which is going to be strange. The whole thing is strange, this particular well, year. I mean, just look at what it's done to uh, business. I mean, you know, my wife and, you know, her job went from being, uh, you know, 24 seven, you know, at her office to, you know, she's, she's got the flexibility of what, I guess spending less than, less than 20% of her time a month um, in, um, in her office. So there's, this whole, you know, th this is really shifting the way we we look at doing business. Um, you know, a lot of you know, like my my wife and my kids' commute used to be an hour plus to go into Boston each morning for school, and um, well, my my wife's you know work is in Boston, but um, they've been making it there in 20 minutes. Um, so that that's a kind of just a testament on how few people are now commuting in to uh, the city, um, and um, and some of the expectations that I've heard are that um, it's not going to increase that much, um, even as we transition to uh, further into phase three and phase four. Right. Well, I got a question in from my uh, good friend John Ritz. So he thinks it's less important than town meeting or the school opening, but as of today, if we look at today, and nothing was gonna change for the next six weeks, how does Halloween, Halloween look like? What would Halloween, yeah, Halloween, I can't even say, it. Halloween look like this year if it was like to happen today? We're, I'm actually working on that. No way. <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> I started. I started on Thursday. I, that was one of the shocking response. I, I wasn't doubting it. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, but you know, this these are the things that you know, you know, people just. I, I'd say the average individual doesn't wouldn't even consider that the health department is looking at all this stuff. Um, but you know, we're looking at you know, do we you know, we we may hold. Um, like a trunk or treat, and if we if we held a trunk or treat, um, how would how would we do this? Would we do it by school? Um, would we do a large it it just and how would we engineer the candy transaction? Um, and how could we do it to support you know just the 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 fun and novelty that is you know Halloween. Um, and, and I, I'm doing, I'm looking at that from both, you know, my daughters and their school's uh, standpoint and said, well, I can easily translate this into Hopkinton. And then let's figure out what other steps we can take to uh, provide a Halloween experience. Um, that said, um, you know, it's, it's not gonna be, again, like it was, last year and you know, on the years prior to this um 
we're going to have to set up some protocols for uh, and, and we may actually have to restrict some of the, you know, like door to door activity um, and, and any door to door exchange. But, you know, there are options. And that's one of the things that we've started doing is, you know, how do we, you know, what options can we bring? What options are most likely to work? Um, and, you know, and it may be that, you know, the June, you know, the juniors and so I mean, actually, you know, there might be high school kids that are interested in participating in a trunk or treat if maybe if we style it, you know, to that, you know, to that demographic that that kind of older student demographic, but, but these are things that, you know, we've started a discussion on and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, our goal has always been to to look at all of these situations so that we can at least, you know, try to provide the best experiences and the closest that we can to some normalcy. Do you think it's safe to say that everyone will be required to wear a mask on Halloween? <laughs> you know, and that's- That works, don't they already? That, that works, I mean, and, it, um, and, and, and or, you know, like if they're, it, it, like, like I, I participated in this, in a trunk and treat event with my daughter's school for the last like three years. And, um, and with them, it's, we're just going to have to add a little structure where, you know, where the kids will still be able to dress up. Um, the candy exchange between, you know, will be at least at six feet, if not a little greater. Um, the kids will be distanced um, at least six feet. They'll be wearing masks, um, but we'll have, and they'll, they'll go in, you know, by, by family groups, um, but they'll be able to see each other. They'll be able to call out to each other. They'll be able to pick up candy. Um, but, you know, it just, again, it just takes a little engineering. Um, and, um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll have a set of rules and expectations laid out and, um, and then, you know, it'll be, you know, the responsibility of the health department and, you know, other volunteers to help execute and make sure that everybody's sticking to the rules that are set up. Because I would, I would think, of course, you know, the trunk and treats became famous because of the triple E threat. Right. And I would think neighborhood trick or treating would be better than the trunk or treats, whereas you got all these groups in the same parking lot. I think you, you get the more crossing right, and mixing right, your right. kids than in a, in a neighborhood. Uh, the only problem is the neighborhoods tend to also have the little parties too, which right. I, I don't know. I, I sort of like the model, you know, go earlier hit the streets, households, I tell you, leaving a bucket out of candy does not work. It'll be gone in 10 minutes, you know? Right. <laughs> I, maybe it's, throw it, maybe we can have a, like a contest where you just throw the candy into the kid's baskets or something, I don't know. Or, or you know, it's, it's, it's pre-ziplock, and like there, there are a variety of different ways we, we can attack this, but you know, that's, you know, that's, that's our challenge is, um, it, it's very easy to say, no, we're not going to have, you know, trick or treat. No, we're not going to have Thanksgiving. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it, but that, you know, that's just not the way that we look at things. It's, oh. you know, we take each one of these events on and figure out how we can come up with a solution, um, again, to provide the best experience. Well, if we could have a, if we could have a snowstorm shut down Halloween, this COVID could definitely do it. There's, there's no doubt in my mind, but uh, I think it could be done safely. And I hope everyone just uses their common sense to actually, you know, do it smart. You know, be smart right. about it. Right, and, it, and it's and that's really all it is. It's, it's just exercising some common sense, and you know, the the flu clinics that we're going to be holding. There. Oh yeah, that's not, on my list. That's uh, they're not going to be anything like your your typical flu clinics because a we're you know we're 
our flu clinics are, they serve two functions. It's A, to provide the flu vaccine, but right. B, to practice for the, uh, the eventual, you know, COVID vaccination. Exactly. And um, so we're looking at different models. And then what we thought we were going to be doing two weeks ago changed because, you know, the, the, the big mass order of flu vaccine that we put in is being distributed to us in smaller uh, segments in smaller segments. So, yeah. you know, so we're going to offer a limited high risk dose or high dose and then probably a uh, children's and then, um, and then one that's open to the general public. And then we'll do, we'll go back when we get the next supply. Um, but, um, this will give us the ability to um, to really work on our um, our system, and um, and then you know to that point, Casey's office is I believe it's fully it, I believe it's complete, and um, so you know we might be able to provide something either in our office or um, outside of our office for a certain number of hours a day um and that's another thing that we're we're trying to figure out um you know how can we best you know serve you know the residents of hopkinton and the employees of hopkinton given these different structural limitations or supply um you know limitations well, as it turns out john for me i've already gotten my application for the high dose flu shot and I've called in to set up an appointment and I've been given an appointment time for myself and my wife to go to the senior center, drive through and get the shots. And there's a application form, some kind of help form that yeah. gives the uh, my health um, insurance besides Medicare and uh, information like that. And then I get a health check while I'm there to make sure I don't have anything that would prevent me from getting the shot. So I'm looking forward to trying it on the 17th to see what happens. I, I noticed that they only had a window from, I think, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. And now I understand that may be because of the limited amount of uh, serum you have for uh, the uh, virus injections. Right. And, that, and that, that's, that's true. And then and the, the further confound all of this is we submit our flu vaccine request back in, God, I think it went in in late January, early February, uh -huh. before any of this happened. So our original numbers were based off of what, you know, the last three years um, participation was. And then we jumped, we, we pushed it up a bit, but, um, uh, you know, given everything that's happened, you know, we are, and then with the governor's um, requirement that all children um, be uh, vaccinated, uh, they've opened up, you know, for additional orders. And then we have um, the ability to go to, or to draw from certain other resources in the area for um, additional vaccine. But, uh, but it's uh, it's it's all it's a process, and if if nothing else, COVID is just it just it's added a whole level of process to everything we do, from Halloween to a vaccination. Clinic. That makes me think of another question that I had earlier about uh, school is opening on the sixteenth. I think that's next uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Will a member of the Board of Health be present at the opening of school to monitor how the traffic flows in, how the students come in, um, watch for anybody that has any obvious symptoms? Will you be involved in that? No, we, we're, we'll be involved in it. And then it's, it's, you know, it's something I've already had. I had one conference call on it today because um, there are, there are just, you know, again, this is a, it's a new process. We're figuring out and we're identifying different issues every day. And then, um, and we're still getting, you know, 
regulatory modifications. Um, you know, I, one of these just came in, it was just modified on the third, actually it's, yeah, this one. So, um, and we expect to have a couple more regulatory modifications between now and when they open. Um, so, you know, like I'll, I'll be, I'm meeting with um, the uh, school committee today or tonight. Um, and as I said, I'm on the phone. I've been on the phone every day with Dr. Kavanaugh and, um, and her administration. Um, but it's, it, it's, uh, it's an interesting, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a complicated process because you're trying to control for, you know, multiple variables, but, you know, we believe that we've got the building is in good, all the buildings are in good shape. Um, we've got controls, policies, and procedures in place um, to minimize the risk that might exist either on the bus, at drop-off, and during the day. And really, it's it's up to um, it's up to you know the parents making sure that they're not sending sick kids to school. It's up to you know each individual participant, be it you know like individually as a um, as a health director. It's my job to make sure that I'm not coming to work sick, that um, that I'm managing the risk within my household, so I'm not transferring any risk that might exist in my household here to the fire department. And it's the same issue with all of the school staff, all of the, um, all the teachers that they have to figure out where their, ex their risk exists, you know, with their own habits, with, you know, what goes on in their household and they need to make sure that they're controlling that risk and not introducing it to um, the school system. And if, if we're all doing our part, um, you know, we should have a, you know, a successful school year. Um, and, um, but it, it's, it's all, there's so much unknown out there that, uh, um, but it, and it's the, the, unknown, the unknown that exists outside of the school um, that is the, the one that's really difficult to control for. Um, you know, I was just looking at our numbers. We had, we had a slight increase um, over the last week of people traveling. Um, we had, I think we're up to 435 or so that have traveled in and out of Hopkinton over the last month. Um, and now we're trying to manage um, and we're working with parents right now to try to figure out how to manage their kids that are at college who might be being sent home or they might be ill. And, you know, how do we, how do we manage and plan for Thanksgiving and Christmas and, um, you know, do, certain, do kids in high risk states have to quarantine for two weeks before coming home or, you know, like, how are we going to work all this, you know, out? Um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, everything is just a, it's a process. Um, so how soon would you think uh, school opens on the 16th? How quickly, if you saw numbers that either move up or down or stay the same, I mean, how, how if numbers started going up, in a, would you see it in a matter of days? Would you see it after a week? If there was any be... increase? like it'd be about a week. Uh, like right now we're monitoring our numbers for, uh, for Labor Day weekend. Um, we, we, you know, you can see it in, uh, you can see some effect in the national statistics or like at colleges where, uh, you know, the kids might've uh, let loose before, um, before they, arrived at college or while they were at college. And um, there's, you know, that's why some of the numbers might be increasing. Um, like I'm monitoring all of the uh, statistics coming out of Boston and Boston's colleges. 
Um, I'm also monitoring um, what's going on at my daughter's school. I mean, my, yeah. my daughter's school, they're back full time, full, uh, uh, they, they have a remote option, but they're, uh, they're back full classroom. And so what we're doing is we're monitoring all of this data to help calculate, all right, what are those, like, I personally think it's the first 14 days um, that will be critical. And then, um, and, and I, I, ex I expect to, I expect people to identify some oopses, like just, and have to adjust maybe the way that they, they handle themselves outside of school at home. You know, it's, it's one of these things where, you know, if I'm a, if I'm a, like if I'm a, a an employee of the health department, um, I know that I can't be going out doing all this high risk activity and expect um, that not to have an impact on, uh, on the performance of my department. Um, and, and, by God, if I introduced something, you know, an illness into my department, you know, that, that would, that would crush me. So yeah. it's, everybody has to kind of take note that, you know, what they do on their free time will have an impact on, you know, the success of uh, the school reentry. Um, and that's why, you know, I, I credit Dr. Kavanaugh in stating that you know, what we really wanted, you know, the residents in Hopping to do was to kind of have a, uh, a quarantine light as we, you know, approached uh, next week where, you know, they weren't taking their kids out to high risk states and, um, you know, we were just focused on getting everybody set for reentry. And if, and if we're controlling that risk and, and, and recognizing where that risk might exist within our social circles or just outside of our social circles, um, that they're controlling for that. And, uh, and then, again, if everybody's doing their job, um, I believe we should have a successful and safe reentry. But it, yeah. it, it takes work. It takes it's a lot of decisions to be made. And uh, Yeah, you know. it, it, it's, a, it's a shame, too. I mean, I, I hope that and I, I see where staff has been added, but I'm hoping that whether they use their paraprofessionals or their teachers, uh, volunteers or, or whoever, para volunteers, I guess they call them. I'm hoping to see that they use them to do the monitoring instead of just the teachers and let the teachers focus back on just the teaching of the kids and not have to worry about, okay, uh, how much hand sanitizer you got left, you know, whatever I, I'd like to, you, you know, like when I coached Little League, you know, they came up with all these rules of Little League, like no on deck batters, and you had to have your parents do a couple hours uh, on game night to at work the doghouse and all this stuff. But they only gave us an hour and 15 minutes of practice every day. Right. And three, three times. And so I got my parents first meeting I had my assistants play with the kids and I had to sit down with my parents and said look we, I can all manage all this stuff here we, I had one person handle the raffle sales had another one handle the doghouse staffing another one handled it and this way here I could focus on the kids teaching right. baseball and it was great so I'm hoping to see that's more in place and I'd love to see the kids policing themselves so the teachers can focus on the job at hand. Yeah, and, and, and it's, you know, like, you know, from our last uh, show, you know, I had a, <laughs> had a tree limb come through my roof and <laughs> sat there and went, all right, this is, a, this is something new that I have to deal with. Um, <laughs> but then I said, well, this is no different than everything else I do in my life. I have to set expectations for the people who are like for the insurance adjuster for the people that are coming out to assess the home uh we have we have a set of procedures you know yeah. 
they get out of their truck, they have their mask on, they meet me, we're distanced. I have a ladder pre-set up. Um, they know where the location is. Um, we, we try to keep our, our, our meeting as brief as possible, our long-term, uh, com our longer conversations, et cetera, are all done over the phone. Um, but, uh, and if they have to come in, they, um, those that want to come into the house, you know, I've got rules set up for, you know, you come in while my kids are at school um, and, and I'm managing all that. It, it's, you know, it's, it's an involved process, but that is what I'm doing to ensure the safety of my own health and my, my, my family's health. Um, and just like you did with baseball, it's, it's setting up the rules, the expectations. And then if everybody follows, you know, the rules and expectations, we should be fine. And, and as we saw over the summer, you know, even when there was a oops, where there was an umpire in a different league who tested positive, they were masked, they were distanced, um, they had no interactions with, uh, no direct act interactions with the participants, and we didn't see any, um, any spread of illness from that event or several others that um, came up, um, you know, at, at different events or in different exchanges. And, and, and it's just one of those things that it helps to demonstrate. If, if people are following the basic rules, um, you know, we can do this safely. And, you know, is there 100% compliance, you know, here at the, you know, in our municipal offices? We're probably at 85 to 95%. But it's because there are enough people doing their job and taking care of that risk. And when they have questions and concerns, they follow up with Casey and I that, you know, we've been successful at controlling that risk. And again, the same applies as we get into school and as we start, you know, opening up, um, you know, all of the different events um, that we're looking at. So, um, you know, it's, it's different. It's not easy, but uh, but that's you know what we got to deal with. And I, at at the end of the day, you know, I think we'll be a, we'll be better off as a community. Like we'll 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 know how to control flu and other stuff better in the future. We should be a healthier community because, in theory, we're we've learned a lot about how to prevent infection, um, and. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's it's just it's like I said, it's just been a process. So, it's, Sean, can I ask? Uh, I'm trying to formulate the question in my mind. I understand that there's a possibility that there may be a vaccine soon, maybe next year, beginning of next year. I don't particularly believe that a vaccine will eliminate the disease. Obviously, we've had flu vaccines around for a long time, and that hasn't eliminated the flu, right. but do you feel comfortable that the things that have been learned over the last seven or eight months with the COVID-19 give you a better shot of seizing the source and stopping the spread and then even treating the disease after it's been found? Yeah, I mean, you, you look at, like, you look at, like, New Zealand and some of these other countries that, you know, they, they didn't have access to a vaccine. They just, they, they, did a hard lockdown. They implemented the same strategies, face covering, distancing, enhanced hygiene, and they were able to defeat this. So I think that when the vaccine is available, if we're still practicing these same um, behaviors, we should we should be able to eliminate this. And 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 it's still, you know, the the experts out there still believe that if we if we could get everybody on board or at least enough people on board that, you know, they were wearing their masks, that they weren't just were avoiding large crowds and gatherings, um, that they're distancing when they were in these environments that uh, we could control it and really drop our numbers. I mean, you'll, like 
what have we done here in Massachusetts or New York City? It, it's really just, we've implemented some very simple strategies and we're controlling it. Um, and, um, you know, I, I get calls from parents who are like, well, look at, you know, look at how bad things are in, you know, the Southern states with their return to school and return to colleges. But I'm like, but they weren't in the same situation. Like they've got much higher, uh, you know, infection rates and their positivity rates are much higher than ours. Um, so like, I, I believe as a state, we're in a good position. And then if we just continue to practice what we've been, you know, what we have been since, you know, March, um, we should be in good shape. And I get with the vaccine, we should be in better shape. Um, you know, it's, and, and it just, it, yeah, it's, it's really, it, it's all, it's all controllable. Yeah. Well, again, the vaccine, it is far enough away. And, you know, the stories coming from all places. Oh yeah. Fast track this fast track. Oh, we got problems now. We're not fast tracking. Oh, this is all going to be fixed by November 3rd. You have all these scenarios, but I think what's important is that the, we're still updating things on a weekly basis because the information is, is changing so much and but you don't know i mean you can't no one can predict i mean you, you can't predict anything it's just that you, you know you you want to give your best guess based on the way it's flowing and that's why people got to word understand the word model it's a model based on the numbers it looks like it's going to go like this all the numbers change okay now it's going to look like this you got to understand, and I, and I think a lot of people are getting it. I, I just think a lot of people are just frustrated over it. Right, right. I mean, that's why, you know, that's why messaging is important. That's why having a well drawn out plan on who is going to message what, um, who's going to, who's in charge and what's the process. I mean, that, like, as much as Casey and I have done, I, I credit a lot of our success to the chief. Um, chief Slayman helped set the process that we follow um, and, and helped, you know, helped us establish, you know, the structure for communication. Um, you know, we have a communication team that they basically, they, they send us a couple emails during the week on what, you know, the focuses should be and then they manage that so we can do our job. If it's, it, you know, this is all, as I said, it's, it's, it needs to be a well established and communicated process. And, and I, I would argue that it, it hasn't been, um, you know, there was a, there's still a lot of people talking about, like to your point, how, um, you know, there was a communication out of the White House that the vaccine would be ready and that the uh, state should prepare to dispense it in November. Well, the actual communication was that the states needed to prepare to possibly open up additional logistic facilities to support the distribution of virus uh, vaccine. And the um, so all the states were put on notice that, you know, people like McKesson would need to possibly open up additional transportation facilities and holding facilities, and that those facilities should be strategically placed by, you know, places that had dry ice or enough, uh, enough power to supply the refrigeration that would be needed. And that, that's what the communication was. And, and everybody go, oh my God, you know, the virus is coming out. It's like, no, we're just, it's the plan to distribute the virus. Oh, not the virus. <laughs> we're already yeah, distributing yeah, that, the virus. That's all I'm oh, putting into not. some QAnon. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, and, and, and honest to God, that is like, this is something that, you know, that we have to deal with. You know, I, I, I can admit that I've had to, address a whole bunch of no I'm not part of some 
conspiracy to distribute. <laughs> and, and then it got to the point where, you know, you're, I'm having discussions with public safety because there are, you know, there are individuals out there that thought that, you know, maybe, uh, you know, that the public health directors were part of some, you know, undercover <laughs> conspiracy. Uh, it's just, it's, it's like, it's been an interesting, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Now, what, uh, what can the public do to help you as far as getting the word out about the flu clinics and how can they volunteer? Do you, do you have all that information? Or is that a Casey uh, question? Casey's handling a lot of that. Um, you know, what we do, you know, we, we do encourage, um, you know, parents to be in communication with um, their um, primary care physicians and their children's primary care physicians to be, because um, that, that, obviously that's the primary source of uh, vac you know, vaccinations and to make sure that kids are, they're getting vax, that they're getting their normal vaccinations, that they're getting checkups, that, um, that we're treating, you know, would, you know, not only for like the flu, but, you know, if your child has uh, um, allergies or, other issues that could be possibly confused with um, with COVID. Um, you know, we've seen that residents in town have uh, displayed COVID-like illness when it was really it was tick-borne. Um, so it's we just need everybody to you know start having those communications with your physicians put plans in place to get vaccinated, be it at your physician's office, you know, at your local pharmacy or through one of our clinics. But we're encouraging everybody to really focus on um, their personal health and their family's health. And if, and if we're all really vigilant and we're following, you know, these basic tenets, distancing, covering, hygiene, we as a community should continue to get better. And I mean, we just, we, we, we did it over the last two weeks. We had a, an upswing that drove us into the green risk rating. And then we had a course correction and we're now back to what we have a, we have the lowest positivity rate that we've had, yep. I think in the entire six months, we're down to like 0.11. Um, we're, we're back to that unshaded category and, um, and we're in a much better position, um, a much better position than, you know, some of our neighboring towns. And, and the fact that we've done that gives us options. It, it allows us to have sports. It allows us to, to take into consideration, you know, whether or not they, they could hold a knitting circle at the senior center. I've never had people so happy <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, they, I mean, they, the knitters were elated that they were able to get together. You know, the you, you get the same group of people that die to get back in bingo. You know, we the bingo halls shut down. You right. know, you, you need eighty to a hundred people to make it work, and we can only have twenty five. And you know, they just oh, just have it outside. And it's like, no, this type of people aren't going to sit in a tent, use porta johns, and. You know, right, right, I think right. you got to make it functioning for them. In there, they're a long time. If Bingo starts at one, then they're at eleven, setting up their tables. Right. Oh, and, and and right now, I mean, that's that's the next challenge. Is so we 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 get through town meeting, we get through the school opening, we we start monitoring and managing the school's operation. But you know, we we can't sit back. Now we have to focus. How do we how do we work with the restaurant owners? Yeah. How do we how do we transition from this outdoor environment to a um, to an inside experience? How do we, like how do we um, continue to assist them with their return and um, and maintain some source of profitability so we don't lose anymore? Um, and, and like this is it's a it's just a constant set of issues that we're being drawn on um, to address. And, and this is the stuff that 
you know, I've already had conversations with people about, you know, so what, what can we do to increase the seat back height? What can we do? Can, can we, can it be 30 degrees out and we have um, outdoor seating, um, you know, at a restaurant and like just, so at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're both, both, you know, my department is vested in um, continuing to push everybody into, uh, you know, that return to normal and, and to support the businesses that are operating as best as we can. Right. And we have a lot of facilities in town that people take advantage of, or at least in my case, used to take advantage of the senior center, the library for one, I'd love to see that open again. Right. Um, those things are just off limits for now, but hopefully they'll be starting back soon. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're looking at all of those. And some of that is being looked on or looked at on a, uh, on a statewide or on the, like the library groups across the state are trying to figure out what is their best, what, what are the best practices for them to open and, you know, what, what functionality can they provide um, and maybe they'll do it in a phased approach. And we're looking at um, the same thing with the senior centers. How can we, you know, open up the senior center safely to provide um, additional services without compromising the health, you know, of our, of our residents. Um, and then what, what services can we bring to the seniors? And um, throughout this whole ordeal, you know, there are issues where, you know, you know, people are, you know, we're seeing more clutter and other issues in the homes. So like my department's been trying to bring in resources to help people um, address those things, those issues at home. Um, it, like I said, it's, you've been a, it's been a busy six months. So. Oh yeah, it has. So I uh, got a question in on the social media. What if like 400 people show up for town meeting? Are they going to limit the amount of people? So could you clear that for us? No. <laughs> well, the, well we, we do have, <laughs> I know there's 200 for the tent, right? I, I will, I'm going to have a, a big bag of chalk. <laughs> <laughs> and much like that rainbow, um, I will be working <laughs> with, uh, like, and, and these are the things that, you know, you know, again, I, I credit the chief and Deputy Miller. I mean, they're like, we have to have a plan in place for everything. And yeah. uh, because the last thing we want to be, you know, caught is flat footed. So if, if 400 people show up, you know, we're going to have to adjust some of the, the traffic flow. Um, and, and, and then that's why we have the ad additional patrolmen out there is to like, they'll start you know, communicating that we're getting a larger number than we anticipated. And then that's when a group of us have to roll out and start, you know, like I'll have, uh, I'll have, uh, you know, measuring tapes and all of that. And we'll start marking locations. I mean, it might be that some people have to stand. Um, um, you know, I've got a few, I've got a few beach chairs in my car. So how, yeah, I was going to bring a couple of those, but uh, the basic I guess, thing to do is town meeting starts at 930. Don't show up at 930. Get there early. The registration uh, starts at 830. Right. You know, get there, park your butt, stay there, vote away and go home. You know, it's I think I think that's the advice I would give everybody. Get there early. You know, it's you know what it's like to go to a regular town meeting and right. register and find a seat to sit. You know this is 10 times worse. Right. Although right. it'll well, be, it won't be a stuffy. <laughs> definitely won't. We got the weather report. The weather's going to look fantastic. And, uh, um, and uh, like I said, you know, there's, they've, they've done enough planning ahead to streamline this process so that, you know, I, my hope and expectation is that this will move along quickly and, you know, and we can 
we can complete our uh, our democratic duty and get our votes in and and proceed into the next uh, fiscal year, and um, and then you know we can do so safely. And it's again, like you said, it's it's planning ahead. While it normally takes me five minutes to register, let me give myself 10, 15 minutes, and we will have like. You know, I know the deputy chief and I are going to be marking out all of those queuing lines, um, and um, just and then and the expectation is that you 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 know what you've been doing over the last six years still probably six months still applies, and that um, you know if if we've got a hundred marks in the queue and you're the hundred and first person, you know just give yourself some distance between them, you know, the next yeah. person. The, co um, the common sense that you don't need markings on the ground. Right. You know, yeah, the mark markings on the ground helps remind you, helps be respectful, you know, because when the person doesn't forget, you know, it's easy for someone just to look down, you know, that person, hey, look down like this here and look up at you and, you know, oh, sorry, like, you know, that's something that simple because it is easy to, and, you know, I, I'm used to tell me, I've been going to Tabay since 1987 here, and I tell you, it is a social event as well, but right, right. It's that's going to be the hardest thing for me. I'm going to be in a control room. I'm going to actually be inside the school. Bob will be outside running the cameras. I'll be inside the school, so I won't even get a chance to be outside, and then you're going to have all these people that I want to see. Normally, like when I do the uh, we do it, all our volunteers work we have extras so people can give each other breaks. And I wind up having to go do something. And as I walk, I'm saying hi and talking to five people before I can but, go do what I want to do. And that, that's why, like, like, we have signage to help people with their decision making. And the, the expectation signage, the last item is, you know, once we're done, we, we want you to disperse, go to your car, um, because, you know, again, we're trying to, we're trying to manage the risk that, um, you know, that gatherings or manage the risk that gatherings can pose. Um, so, um, again, if, if, for all the, if for all the day says, I say, oh, you can have 200 people here, but I can't have 50 people at my house or 50 people in my yard. Well, you know, with their conducted business at distance, whereas you know those people are going to be partying and no yeah. mask and, and everything. There is a big difference between the two. Yeah, and I, I joke that I don't count as a person, so um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you know, um, yeah, so it's uh, um, yeah, and but that's that's just the reality that we're in, you know. Right. I, so, uh, Next, here's the big question because we only have two minutes left, or a minute and a half. Uh, next week is the flu clinic at the senior center. Right. And that runs from? Uh, 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Yeah, yeah. Are we going to be able to see you here at 2 o'clock? Yes, because, yes, because, again, Casey will be managing most of that. Yeah, and, and I uh, think I'll be down there with her, so at 2 o'clock. So maybe, maybe I'll just be running it out of the senior center. Sure. So, and since I'm going to get my shot, I'll be here with my arm in a sling to show you. What, yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's what we want to do. Is it, we'll we'll probably go live from from the as we wrap up the uh, flu clinic. We'll go live from there for a few words too, and I uh, will touch base with uh, Casey down there. So, but thank you again for everything and for updating us and keeping us safe as usual. We will see you Saturday at town meeting at, uh, I'll, I'll probably see you at 8.30 in the morning, like everybody else. So I want you to have a good day. Thanks again. And everyone at home, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Well, thank you. Stay safe.